Welcome. Welcome to my weird world of absolutely nothing. Which is perfectly how I want it. So, what I'm looking at, I'm going to explain how to get the best quality for VHS beta and 8mm. Or, well, 8mm is wrong. Video 8, which uses an 8mm tape. Let me see. I think I will start with VHS. The easiest way to get VHS is to go and buy, I recommend either from Panasonic or Sony, I'm not going to give model numbers, but Panasonic and Sony both manufacture, uh, Panasonic has a few models, Sony to my knowledge has only one model, they're all, uh, Sony's is black, but it doesn't have a tuner, and um, it has VHS and DVD, it has a hell of a head for VHS. And plug that in through HDMI into an Elgato or whatever you use to capture and record. Capture is for still frames, record is for motion. So whatever you use for capture or recording, go ahead and put that in there. And uh, that one will suffice for, I would say, 90% from my own collection of VHS tapes. 90% of the tapes will play properly in this particular VCR. And then there's the Panasonic line, and uh, they do HDMI a little bit differently, more screen door looking, but it does play. It also has a powerful head. And the Panasonics, if you want to record to uh, VHS, has the VP mode is an advantage and a tuner but there might be tunerless models also the Panasonic can read all forms of recordable DVD but can no longer in the newer models read video CD I've never tried video CD in the Sony not that it really matters I said you know the video CD is almost a one-to-one -one ratio video to music capacity put in a 80 minute CD you have a um, 80 minutes. Well, actually, uh, it's 79.45, so 15 seconds off. Um, most uh, video CDs, say you wanted to write a video CD that uses a 99-minute CD, which can hold majority of Disney movies on one disc. And if authored properly 20 years ago, yes, it could have killed Laserdisc, the 99-minute CD. Um, reading is not really so much the problem. Once the laser's locked on, it'll probably read through the entire 99-minute CD. And it holds almost a gigabyte of data. There's a lot of advantages to this. However, a lot of players don't. And there is the disadvantage. And I mean a lot, I'm guessing it's an estimate, but probably two-thirds. Um, like, for example, I have... I have two different car stereos. Um, well, the car stereo I have today is more modern. It can utilize my iPod, and I can listen to iPod, and so forth and so on. And then, uh, I can read MP3s from CDs, which is how I make the majority of my CDs now. It can read 900, um, and excuse me, 99-minute uh, CDs without a problem. I know this because I put one in, and I read it all the way through. On the other hand, in my older CD player that I had in the car, couldn't. It would start, and then it would, um, when I would stop, go somewhere, do some shopping, come back in the car, and voila, it's all screwed up. So, outside of the DVD recording, CD recording, for VHS, this is absolutely the way to go. Don't bother with these kits being sold, VHS to DVD, VHS to digital, whatever. No, 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 no. Get an HDMI VCR. Uh, I recommend the Sony over the Panasonic, but both are good. 
Um, and there's a way to get rid of the screen door effect. You gotta run the video through handbrake. The videos will record at 16.9, so expect stretched screen. And you know, something's in widescreen on VHS, and you're gonna have less resolution, and you just have to figure out how to do it. So let me explain how to do that. First, let's start with the pan and scan stuff. Pan and scan in HD is 1440p. That's 1920 by 1440. Huge files. Beautiful looking. A VHS tape in SP ranges anywhere from 300i to 400i. In LP, it's less. And in EP, it's 90i. In VP, I don't even know. I I don't even know what VP is. Maybe it's 55i. Um, that's a guess. By the way, I have. I have no idea. VP is a more of a security format um, because there are there are ways to hold massive amounts of hours on a VHS tape for security purposes. So I recommend um, it doesn't matter what speed the tape is at. Record it at 1080p from the Elgato device at a minimum of 30 frames. If your computer has the RAM and the CPU and your video card has the RAM and the GPU, click 60 on that sucker and let it go. The more frames the better because it has more information. It's going to make a bigger file so go out there today and go buy a Seagate 8 terabyte or whatever or build your own. Um, I do recommend Firewire or what is Apple using? Thunderbolt? Lightning Bolt? I don't know what it's called. Over USB. Because, um, as Phil Barnes puts it, USB is for devices. Uh, devices being joysticks, keyboards, printers, maybe. You know, low, low res, or cheap printers, and, uh, mice. USB is really not for what it became. But that's what we're stuck with. So I do recommend, what I just recommended, is going ahead and uh, recording it with, and also, you know, there's good, better, best. Put it on best. Just put it on best in the configuration. Now, it's up to you to determine if the program's mono or stereo after the recording is made. Only you will know that. If it's a standard recording, go ahead and re-encode it. I'm going to explain to you what, what's going on here. Go ahead and re-encode it through Visual Hub, iMovie, or something where you can bring in the file and then output it. Ingest the file and then regurgitate it. Output. I'm... I'm going to use Visual Hub because I still use that on my Macs. Yes, Visual Hub with a little bit of elbow grease works just fine in Mac OS Sierra. Put that in there and then set the resolution to 1920, 1440, deinterlace, and 2 pass. Everything else is user dealer's choice. And walk away. It's going to take a few hours. Now, don't edit the video. I hope if you use a thing like iMovie or Vegas or whatever, don't edit the video just yet. Once the video is done, which could be, you know, anywhere from, depending on process, or anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 hours, especially if somehow or whatever you have a... Like I was hoping to do is use G4s and G5s and older Intel Macs for just re-encoding purposes. That way I can just truck on through with newer videos and not, not worry about hogging up my two newer machines. Once the video is done, go ahead and put it into the film editor, like iMovie or Vegas. Um, no, wait. Scratch that. Run it through Handbrake. Um, unless 
No, I recommend Handbrake for a few reasons. Okay, Handbrake has a preset. Go to Apple Legacy, or it says Legacy Devices or something. Go to iPod Legacy. And in iPod Legacy, go ahead, unclick the 5G support. Click Large File Size Web Optimize. Uh, from there, go ahead, manually... Well, you can't do this just yet. Go ahead and put the bit rate up to 50,000. I forgot to tell you that. In, like, Visual Hub or whatever. Whatever is the at output, put it at 50,000 kbps. Trust me on this one. Frame rate here. Either leave same as source, or some versions of Handbrake can do 60. I find leaving it same at source is usually the best way to go. After this is done, um, go ahead and make sure it's multi-pass and all that stuff. I would leave the sound alone at this point and go to uh, picture preview or something like that, and where it allows um, adjustment and cropping and so forth and so on. Go to the filters and click the first two. I think one is the interlace and the other is decombing or something like that. Leave the other settings alone. Don't worry about smoothing or any of that crap. That just causes more problems. Because then the stuff looks like it's paste. No, I'm not kidding. It, even at the weakest form of deblocking or smoothing or whatever it's called, it makes the stuff look like paste. Now go back to the other side, crop it up. Don't, don't uncheck uh, the uh, borders thing, but go First, turn up the resolution really high, leaving the check mark to keep aspect ratio. But you're not going to keep that aspect ratio. I'm doing this all from memory, I'm not actually in the programs or anything like that. Uh, keep the aspect ratio, turn it all the way up to the highest it will go. In this case, it'll, it can't go any higher than 1920 by 1080. Once there, and it won't be this resolution, go ahead and uncheck the um, ratio thing. Well, no, it, it'll be 1440, excuse me, 1440. But uncheck it and put both at full resolution of 1920 by 1440. Go ahead now and adjust the cropping. Now, it won't, it won't adjust it too bad. Make sure you know what TV safe is. And um, go ahead and get out any black, any garble at the bottom from tracking, any garble at the top from tracking. This is stuff we wouldn't see on a VCR um, eons ago because of TV safe. We see it all now because everything just throws the full resolution out for us to enjoy or suffer from. After that, go ahead and just click start. Walk away for a few hours again. You got it on two pass again. So. At this point, go ahead after the video's done. This is hours later, probably. Go ahead, check out the video. Make sure it's okay. Make sure it looks okay. If not, just do it again. Don't worry about wasting time. This is trial and error. Eventually, you will find a rhythm that works. That comes from having experience. You have to have the experience in order to have the rhythm that works. You think some, uh, you think Miles Davis or Winston Marsalis just played the trumpet the way they do because they were born that way? No. So this is from me working in a TV station. That this is how we would clean stuff up for broadcast. Um, I think Sony Vegas has a TV safe. Thing. I know Adobe Premiere did too. Um, I could tell you where to get Adobe Premiere for free, but I'm not going to. You want Adobe Premiere, you want Sony Vegas, which I recommend Sony Vegas Pro, you want... Well, I think iMovie is free if you buy a new Macintosh. I don't like it. I use old iMovie. But there are advantages. And of course, Final Cut. And if you're using a free Final Cut, it's probably optimized for PPC. Yeah, good luck with that. So, Beta's done the same way. Have your Sony or Panasonic HDMI 1080p VCR going through your Elgato. And go ahead and hook up 
I would recommend either Super Beta or ED Beta. Mr. Betamax can refurbish these. If you're serious about it, you will pay Mr. Betamax's price. I'm, I'm hoping to one day buy from him an ED Beta. Uh, with component out. But, anyways, you can have AV. Maybe S Video. Go ahead, use that, put it in, record from that. 8mm has a few ways to go. Now, knowing that 8mm can plug in the Firewire directly, and iMovie 06, anyways, can see it directly, I recommend doing that. Don't even go through the VCR. However, if you don't have that method, I don't know, I, I think older 8 wouldn't. I'm talking, so when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about D8 and DV. DV and D8 are not the same format. Uh, by tape. They are the same format um, by codec. Go ahead and take older camcorders and do the same thing, plug it in through AV. Um, if your HDMI, VCR, DVD combo can play there, I do have a model that's HDMI 1080i, not 1080p, but it can play video CD. Do it that way. Or or put the video CD in your disk drive and take the raw video CD files and have either Handbrake or Visual Hub or whatever program can recognize I think VLC can recognize these. But you can get the actual digital source. The only digital source that I found that doesn't work too well is a movie CD. Alright, I don't I don't have, I, I assume SAD and uh, VHD are also formats that can be done as well, this method. Uh, because I'm, what I'm doing is I'm simplifying it for you. Here's a VCR that has HDMI up to birth. So let's just use it. Come on, I mean, don't, don't fight. Don't go around looking for a battle where a battle does not exist. Do it this way your life easier. That's what I'm encouraging here. And essentially, yes, yes, your VCR can act, because it doesn't have a tuner, it's not going to heat up as hot. Yes, a tuner really does, um, so the Panasonics have a tuner, and if the tuners, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're tuned into anything, they, they run hot, they're always on. But with this method here, and I don't know anything about the Funai. I don't know anything about the Magnavoxes or anything. When I bought one, it had component that was only for the DVD. So I ended up using that as just a, in AV mode. I think that defeats the whole purpose. Um, I think JVC has models that can also go out through component or HDMI. I don't know. I don't know what they're making. And I do recommend stockpiling at least a dozen um, VHS units like this. Finally, I'm going to come to, uh, at least in VHS, tapes that want to fight. I have a copy of Lensman, the Streamlined Pictures release in America by Best Home Video. Best should have become called worse. This thing was recorded on EP and not very well. Um, it has the same problem my like Club Mario's have. How do I get around with this? Well, the easiest way is to get what I call a tank. Unfortunately, my Panasonic tank only has SP and LP. That's how old it is. So I need a tank, and I do have a JVC tank, and I do have an RCA tank that needs repair. And then after they're repaired, uh, I want to repair them both. And I also have a Toshiba tank. Um, but a tank is, my definition of a tank is no digital video anything. It uses AV. has to have AV at a minimum. And then uh, manual tracking. And by having the manual tracking, um, that allows me, because the shaking and everything is caused by the digital signal processors that are used in modern VCRs. Like I said, great for 90% of what's recorded, even home recording. But when recordings are substandard, a tank is the best thing to have because it will just power through the errors 
and that's actually what you want to do. It's better, it's better to have the errors powered through than to have the shaking of the tape. Believe me, once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's the problem. I hate to use that phrase, but it's true. Laser disc, yes. Um, I do believe there's some laser disc with components that may have at least 480p adjustable. Uh, my recommendation is then get a component to HDMI if it's that big of a deal. If not, just pay, play it through the AV of one of these devices. And yes, Dreamcast, N64, whatever. They're not going to look as good as having an a HDMI modification put in. And nor uh, With the Sony, there's no RF. So there's no real way to do... Atari 2600 or something like that. That one, um, this is how you do this. I'm going to use the there's 2600 television ColecoVision NES2. Um, like a, because of the AV, yes, you can go ahead. You can adapt anything to anything, really. So there are ways. Um, RetroCore showed a way recently on how to do um, HDMI for Sega Dreamcast, pretty good method. It's not the method I'm using right now, but um, it's a much better method. Actually. And uh, there's a um, there's a way. I'm going to explain it, and it's expensive, but it's worth it. In TV, there's a way to break up the RF signal into an AV signal. And what I recommend is called a D-Mod. Buy a broadcast quality D-Mod. It runs anywhere from $90 to $400. Make sure it has um, analog tuning besides uh, digital tuning. And go ahead and put it in there. Um, as for digital tuners go, if you need to record from TV with Delgato, uh, Kmart, I don't know anywhere else that sells this, but Kmart has HDMI digital tuners. I recommend one of those. But for Atari 2600, go ahead and get a D-Mod. It has a... Um, it takes an RF signal, an analog RF signal, and breaks it up into audio and video. From there, go ahead and either plug it into this VCR I'm telling you to plug it into, or go ahead and get an AV to HDMI, or it might even break it up into component if you get a higher-end model. There might even be models out today that I'm unaware of that go straight to HDMI. This way, the original hardware is not modified. HDMI is a constantly changing form of hardware. And that's where the uh, con lies, as in pros and cons, not, not as in a confidence game. So I highly, highly, highly recommend, definitely recommend doing what I, I am suggesting. Get a D-Mod. Um, it doesn't hurt to put an RF signal amplifier and then plug it into the D-Mod, but the D-Mod should amplify it itself. But the amplifier, and don't get a cheap amplifier from like Home Depot or Walmart. Go and again, spend money for an amplifier. And when I mean amplifier, I mean it has to be plugged in. It'll take the gain, boost it, and then output it in a way that may even work better. So even if there's already an amplifier, inside the RF. This is better. Now, with my setups, would I have all this stuff? Yes, I would. And what I'm getting to here is something even more unique. There's a thing in television called a switcher. This is why I don't use the phrase switch box, because that's it's either a switch or a switcher. These are switches. If it's automatic, it's a switcher. I don't know what a switch box is uh, in television. In power, that's the thing put on a circuit breaker. So, get a switcher. And this thing uses a code of numbers, but can ingest numerous sources. It, it, it is bound by its own output input so forth and so on. And try to get the best possible sources here. Now this is a different scenario for capture. You want a switcher that has HDMI out. 
and a switcher that has HDMI in, component in, AV in, RF in. And then it, it interprets the signal from there. Maybe don't need the RF in part because switch uh, using DMOD. And then go ahead, get one that has, you know, I don't know, 50 ports. And it's going to use a number for each device, so keep that directory handy. This is the right professional way to do it. Um, I like the way Retrocore did his. He showed it on a video walking through his house. But this is the way I would do it. I would buy broadcast racks and put those in my house and then get, you know, and I want broad, broadcast racks that have braces on both sides. I don't like it where it's just front side uh, braces. I want the braces and the uh, shelves to be all sides, all four, for maximum strength. And this is how I would do it. This is absolutely how I would do it. And I've been planning this for Eon. I probably won't get it done to the age of 50, where there'll be more than just a Nintendo Switch and the PS4. And everything I would have would be hooked up. I wouldn't be using the PS3 as three different, four different systems. It would be just the PS3. I would buy appropriate things. I would have the modification done. Uh, well, actually, there's ways to do it. Um, I'm not buying the retro blocks. I don't like the idea. Um, I don't... Because the way I look at it is, if I bought a retro blocks, then I would buy one for Sega CD, one for Sega Saturn, one for PlayStation, so forth and so on. Um, the main reason I don't like retro blocks is I don't I don't want to do the exchange. So that's why I just said I would buy buy it seven times over. Um, I have the original hardware. It's not a bad idea to run other hardware. And I understand where retro blocks is coming from. I just don't like the idea. I don't want to fund it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. If they can prove their worth, I will go out and buy it. Right now I'm looking at a Retro Freak. I'm looking at an ABS. But I don't have any money for any of this. Not when I'm talking about buying a house. So, you know, why am I buying a house? Is mainly because if I pay the rental, I'm throwing money down the gutter. If I use... My mortgage will be less than my rental. <laughs> there, there's a lot to say about that now. And um, anyways, I hope this uh, very fast talking, no examples given, just a lot of talking, has helped spur and given you guys an idea of what you want to do. Because I want to move on to... Well, I've read the video game news today, and there's absolutely nothing. So I'm going to report on a few things that I don't know if will be there later. I think that there's a Shadowrun game on GOG, that's 2 or $3, I would buy that. I recently saw Undertale on GOG for $5, I like that, I like that idea a lot. I like GOG because it doesn't have any DRM, and though I don't do this, well I've done it once, but I don't do this, um, I can share the game. GOG is truly the Steve Wozniak doctrine in action about co computer software. But, um, most of the GOG stuff I have, what I like about it is it's the same configuration I have no matter what's my system. Steam, I've encountered a few problems, but I don't have anything, um, overtly against Steam except Steam itself. It, it seems to be bloatware, while the games are not. I would rather buy all my stuff from GOG and not do any business with Steam, but then there's games that are not on GOG yet. I would prefer if those games did come to GOG, so I could go ahead and just completely migrate to GOG. It's the same problem. Origin also, in my opinion, is bloatware. And then I've been thinking, well, I do want a new computer for games, but what? I don't trust Microsoft and Windows 10. I think they're going to nickel and dime us for subscription service just to get updates. They already said they are. So, what... You know, what do I do? I don't pay for Xbox Live Gold, by the way, if anyone's wondering. I do my Bing points. That gets me the service for free for a year, every year. Got to use, I do a lot of research, a lot of, there are, there are mountains of things that I have that I've never revealed to the public. And uh, I'm revealing a secret here. So you want Xbox Live Gold for free. You got to do Bing points. 
can get a few months for free, or you can do what I'm suggesting. And, uh, this is raw. The whole 12-month package is on a level 2 search. A 29,000 point redemption uh, in being rewards. That takes from December 1st to April 1st can do. You gotta do all the searches every day on a Windows 10 computer running Edge with Bing. You have to answer all the trivia questions and everything. It takes from December 1st to April 1st to do. Or to March 31st. Not joking. It's, it's a monumental task. Can't skip a day. Skip a day, you'll be delayed, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll lose it. This is the only way. It's not quick, it's not easy. It's tedious, it's boring, it will grate upon your nerves, like, because it's, it, to, I find it boring, I find it tedious, and yes, it grates on my nerves like cheese on a grater. It really, it really is an endurance battle, but at the same time, I'm not spending a dime, and I'm not losing or gaining anything uh, financially. What I mean by that is, um, after that's done, I immediately start on Bing Point to uh, get $10 free, which helps in buying Xbox 360 games. I won't subscribe to PlayStation Live or PlayStation Network or whatever. PlayStation Plus, that's what it's called. Right? I'm not going to subscribe to that. Anything that needs that, well, then I'm, I'm shit out of luck. With Nintendo Switch, if I can get the games, I don't have to play online. And um, I understand they have this idea they want us to do this. Uh, no. No, the answer is no. I don't like it. I've never liked it when I was with Microsoft. I, I hate it. I hate that we have to pay for online services. Um, I understand there's a backbone and an infrastructure and so forth and so on. No. Absolutely not. No. No, 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 no. Um, just no. So I'm voting with my dollars not to do it until the day they say I can't buy any software unless I'm a member of the service and they don't have physical software at the stores. Um, that is a, a likely possibility, I guess. But I don't know. I don't work anywhere. Tell me that. If I did work somewhere, it would be an arcade fixing and repairing machines. Now, um, oh, wow, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's what we call a brain fart in broadcasting. Or life. I made some footage from the guy game, and yes, there is nudity in it if getting to super stiff level. But, um, what a lousy game. I mean, there's like no effort put into this game whatsoever. And strangely, it runs on an Xbox 360. Now, about backwards compatibility. Yeah, I know. I wanted to give a quick review of the guy game. Um, the most enjoying part of the guy game was the uh, ball mini game. Where I have to get these uh, plastic balls into these... Uh, no, it's nothing loose. I mean, it, Essentially, ski ball. Yeah, I enjoyed that. In fact, I would I'd play that on my iPad. But the guy game itself, overall, there's no game there. Same trivia questions every time, whatever. The girls are ugly. The, I'm not joking. The girls in the guy game are ugly. 
You want better looking girls? Play Leisure Suit Larry, Magna Cum Laude. Um, that's on a. That also works in the Xbox 360. Yeah, I've done a purge of almost everything I have. Um, this is how it breaks down for me. So there's the PlayStation 1, 2, and 3. And it all plays on my fat PS3. So, if it's not on N64 or Virtual Console on the Wii U or Wii, well then obviously I'm going to get the PS3, I mean the PlayStation 1 version, put it in my PlayStation 3. Um, PS2, I, I have a slightly different criteria. Um, GameCube, PS2, and the original Xbox, I have... If it works on the 360, then I get the original Xbox version. That seems to be the best looking version. And then for... Um, PS2 or GameCube, it doesn't matter after that point. So I would prefer the GameCube version because I can play that in my Wii, which has an HDMI out adapter. And then obviously, you know, there's the PS2. But at this point, it doesn't matter. It's interchangeable between PS2 or GameCube. And it will be interchangeable after I do the HDMI thing that uh, RetroCore did on my Dreamcast, and then I'd have those three systems. But definitely would get the PS1 version over the N64 version of games uh, right now. Um, assuming that the game isn't released on, like, Dreamcast or whatever. If you notice, I don't talk about much on the computer front other than GOG, Steam, Origin. Um, but then I did address that I, I do want to make some games, uh, some computers for older games, and have the ability to record from that. I guess I never stated that, where I'd have to have the VGA signal split, and then up converted to HDMI, and so forth and so on. That, that's a different project for a different time. Uh, also, um, about these retro cards, Power, power Pack, EverDrive, whatever, they're, they're good if I don't want to wear out my original cartridges. So I do recommend those, but I, I know what people are really doing with them. I'm not going to talk about that. I used a Retron 5, and it's decent. Um, but, um, no, I don't have an Xbox One. I have a PS4. And, and I guess I'll, I will be getting a Nintendo Switch within a year of its release, but not this year. Yeah, I have the Wii U, so I play a lot of Wii games through the Wii U, so I get 1080p signal completely. Meaning my old Wii is simply a GameCube. And a movie player, essentially. Uh, the reason for that is I'm having problems with Hulu on both Apple TV and the Xbox 360. The other drawback about having Hulu on the 360, or the PS4, or the PS3, or the Wii U, is it's using the full capacity of these systems in a very high power way, and it doesn't do that on the Wii. But, then I'm getting worse picture. So, I guess it really depends on the content. I just need to upgrade my Apple TV, from an Apple TV 2 to an Apple TV 4 with a big hard drive uh, inside. That's all problem solved right then and there. I used to watch Hulu through my uh, Blu-ray player, but I guess I'm not allowed to do that anymore, though YouTube, Voodoo, and Netflix still work there. Um, uh, this is, so uh, that's pretty much how it breaks down for me. Any Xbox, original Xbox game that works in my 360, I consider a 360 game. And no, I really don't have a desire to use, to buy an Xbox One. I just don't. I, I, I'm not attracted to the system. And other than Rare Replay, nothing calls out to me on it. I have all the Halos. I never paid a dime for Halo on anything but Mac and PC. I set up this thing. Um, I gave everyone a copy of Halo regardless 
if they had a Mac or a Windows computer. So that way, I, uh, my goal was to play. It's the same reason that I bought 007 Legends for Phil. I was going to shoot him as Bond or whatever. But it, these things just don't peter out anymore. The older I get, the less it matters. That's what I'm noticing. They just don't have the time anymore. The, you know, I, I think a lot of people are nostalgic for some kind of online game or whatever. Um, but seriously, folks, take a look at yourself and, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to try to get healthy? Um, I'm eating less, doing more, and I'm still not losing weight, at least to me. But there's other people out there. I mean, hey, let me be blunt. I, I, I think the guy at Review Tech USA, he's okay. Uh, he's rich at Review Tech USA, but, uh... Seriously, dude, let's lose the weight. No no need to look like the big bear at the circus on the motorbike. Let's go ahead and lose the weight and be healthy. Yeah, I'm calling him out for that because, you know what? I want him to be here 50 years from now on YouTube, if YouTube is still around, making videos of his opinion. Um, I stopped subscribing to him because it was just uh, too, I have too many subscriptions. That's all. Go ahead and look at my subscriptions. I have a lot of subscriptions. And I'm still trying to whittle those down. Um, because it, it just gets annoying when looking at my... I, you know, like yesterday, I was gone for a few hours. I come back because I have 80 notifications on YouTube. It's like, come on. So I'm, I'm really cutting down on the subscriptions and, and the notifications that go with it. Because it, it clutters up stuff. It just does. It, it, and, you know, at the same time, I do want to show my support. So I'll still give people a thumbs up or whatever like that. I'm not endorsing, bashing, or chasing people away from any particular channel. Um, you know, if they choose to make content in a way that appeals to nobody but themselves, like me, then that's, that's fine and dandy. You know, I don't have their money, power, or viewership in comparison. I don't. I don't. I don't have the ability to, to sit around and go to my my bank account and say, "Oh, look at the money I made on YouTube." It's just it's just not there. It's not. It does get frustrating. It does get frustrating because I was at one time very high up, and uh, in a way, in a way, a lot of things got screwed up. I would prefer to have one YouTube account for everything that I do, but that's no longer. Um, under TGN, I'm not allowed to have people claim the videos and keep the videos up. Um, but then again, they are a Canadian company. I'm in America. I don't really have to follow their terms of service. I do it because I have integrity. Integrity is the only thing that counts in this world. But integrity means a self-honesty. If a person can't be honest to themselves, they can't be honest to anyone else. That does not mean that, oh, what is right and wrong? What's wrong to me... Um, might be right to you, and what's right to me might be wrong. No, that's bullshit. Okay, that's Church of Sinon talk. That's that's Lifespring talk. That's Est talk. That's bullshit. That's what I call that. Bullshit. No. Society has set up a handful of rules. Um, in, in the ancient world, there's the Hammurabi Code, the Ten Commandments, whatever the hell Roman law was. And in, in the modern world, we write down constitutions. And in the United States, we have one constitution that governs all. And then it's subservient to uh, 52 constitutions. Uh, well, you're thinking, well, there's only 50 states. Well, no. Um, some states are commonwealths. And the commonwealths are legally not states. They're commonwealths. That's it. That's all. So, we have 50 states and two commonwealths, if you want to count Mariana and Puerto Rico. Um, and then we have territories and stuff like that. And, um, in essence, you know, we have legally 50 states. Why? Because it looks good. Truthfully, we should have 52. Let Puerto Rico and Mariana and combine Guam into that state. A whole new state. You know, what I say for a solution is Hawaii and Guam should get a large representation, everything but American Samoa. And um, 
what to do with Americans. So let's give them statehood. Come on. Let's make them American citizens instead of American nationals. Let's go ahead and do resort development on those islands. Yeah. Let's have them become, you know, part of the United States and have them become their own state. But maybe there's some requirements. Um, I do know there's requirements for statehood, so I don't know what that is. Just thought I would bring that up real quick. It's not political either. It just is what it is. And I would have to say it's pretty tough out there. And it takes a tough person to handle the toughness. Now, about Blu-ray. Yeah. You like that? Phil says I'm completely random. So, I, I intend to stay that way. On Blu-ray, I have a lot of Blu-rays. Most of them bought used, actually. Or on sale. Like, uh, let me look at some. Okay, there's Casablanca. Casablanca, Enter the Dragon, and Nightmare on Elm Street 1 through... I believe that's only 1 through 7. I bought all of those. Cheap. How cheap? I walked into Best Buy the day after Christmas. They had they, this is the special edition of Casablanca, and the special edition of Enter the Dragon, and then the Freddy thing. We paid only. Oh, I would say the movies were six to seven dollars each, maybe eight dollars at the most. Uh, Willy Wonka we got on sale. This is again the special edition. I mean, I can see where I bought things used for a few bucks. Uh, let me keep going here. I have the big book, Harry Potter's. I bought those. I bought those pretty uh, cheap. I bought them all on eBay. I have the big box Goonies. Got that on clearance at Target. Uh, I believe for for five ninety nine before tax, so six bucks. Um. Criterion, I played. I paid full price for. Phil hates the Criterion collection, though. If you look at the movies, I might three ten to Yuma, Kevin Gay, uh, Things to Come, Video Drum. I'm not buying the artsy fartsy stuff. I'm just buying movies I like. And they just happen to be with Criterion. Uh, Thirty Nine Steps, Alfred Hitchcock. Let's see what else do I have here. Oh, the Alfred Hitchcock collection went to Best Buy. It was eight ninety nine. We bought that. We bought the. We also bought Close Encounters, the third kind, and the Mel Brooks collection. Close Encounters is one of the special editions. And the Mel Brooks collection, we paid $12.99 for. This is something that usually sells much, much higher. I've seen it for sale recently for $24.99. This one we paid um, $12.99. Or I'm just going to use $13 or whatever. Uh, went to Barnes & Noble. They had a... They had a... Uh, buy two get one free deal on Warner Warner Brothers DVDs and they weren't even at full price I got the book version of Meet Me in St. Louis How the West Was Won and the Full Metal Jacket book version was free let's see Ten Commandments got that on sale uh, Hobo with a Shotgun Machete got those used Blade Runner Special Edition um uh, and Cleopatra paid $8.99 for both of those. Mamma Mia was $2.99 at Big Lots. Aliens vs. Predator Double Pack was $8.99. Plenty to a Dirty Harry, bought that used. Let's see, 300 book edition. Got that at Target for $4.99. Got it, she got to sniff this out. Uh, let's see. Um, got Cinderella Trilogy from Disney for free when I signed up for Disney Movie Club. And then I immediately canceled after getting a handful of movies at discounted rate. Any music, I bought that at a thrift store, $2.99. Jurassic Park Steelbook, $4.99 on sale. Shawshank Redemption was $1.99 the day after Christmas at Best Buy. Let's see, Santa Claus... Oh, that came that came free with the other trilogy. Uh, Suicide Squad, 
Uh, no, that was a Christmas gift. Paid full price. Red Dawn, cheap. Uh, Gone with the Wind. Again, like uh, Casablanca, cheap. Clint Eastwood collection, eight ninety nine. Came with a bunch of Universal Eastwood. It was eight ninety nine for this collection used at Zia Records. I only wanted one movie, and that movie was um, Coogan's Bluff, or is it Buff? No, Coogan's Bluff, I think. And the movie itself was quite expensive, so I'm like, I can buy all these movies, or I can buy that one movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Special Edition. Um, I use Zia points on that, so I, I, I trade a lot of stuff into Zia, so I didn't pay anything for that. Um... Let's see, Apollo 18 was free. Class of 84. Song of the Sea, cheap, cheap. Batman of Soul and Arkham, cheap. Wolf of Wall Street, End of Watch was free. Gone in 60 Seconds was free. Uh, when you register Disney stuff at Disney Movie Rewards. Well, what's your mind? I do Nomeo and Juliet was free, and I got it registered for rewards. The very reward service I got it from, I got to register it for. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, Despicable Me 1 and 2 was bought used. Legend of Oz was bought used. Turtles was bought used. Um, I went to this place. I'm not going to give them a plug. They said, buy, buy something, get a bunch free or whatever. So I took advantage of that. Pink Panther 2, bought that at a convenience. I buy a lot at convenience stores. Only four bucks each. Let's see here. The Matrix was, um, it's a book edition, and it was pretty cheap. And, um, Gladiator was only a few, I think I got it. There's like a Gladiator and something double pack at Walmart. I'd recommend buying that. I think it's only ten bucks. I only paid five bucks for Gladiator at Target. Um, well, that's pretty much it. I don't want to go through all my Blu-rays. Oh, Dick Tracy was free. Um, yeah, I don't want to go through all my Blu-rays right now. Um, I'm just looking at the shelf. and I do the same thing for video games. Got to sniff out a deal. And that's why I was talking about the Bing points for Xbox Live. Got to sniff out a deal. When there's a sale online or something and you have the money, take advantage of it. Make sure you're not going to suffer. Your well-being is the most important thing. Be selfish with your well-being. Do not be selfish with your pleasures. Your pleasures mean nothing on this earth. Now, why are those games down there? I'm, I'm looking. You can't see what I'm looking at, obviously. Why are those games there? Those games are down there. Switch it out. And they have multiple copies of some games. I'm wondering if I should hold a contest or something like that. Yeah, I know you didn't hear me too well there. I'm sorry. I wonder if I should hold a contest or something for multiple games. I haven't decided that yet. And uh, that's pretty much it. So it's going to be under an hour today, but more or less an hour. Come on, let's just call it an hour. Uh, if you have anything, blah, blah, blah. Coffee for Binky at gmail.com. I hope you have a good day. It's raining out here today. My dogs wanted to go outside. I want them to come back in. They don't want to be in the small room that's their room. I guess they really can't blame the dog, but whatever. All right, and um, I think I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Or, well, you won't see anything, but whatever. Right, right.